So Krista, um, this is a wonderful ranch. We really appreciate you showing us everything you're doing here outside of cannabis. Like you said, everything that you were gonna grow in under this permit is in the area that we just panned across. So going forward, do you really think that you're getting the support amongst your community in terms of people that are currently in process of trying to get a license? Are they helping expose what's going on to you yeah. and others? No. Is, is the media helping? No. So what is the problem? Are people afraid of the repercussions? Yes. And that's legitimate. So isn't it the media's job? Like who are the key media people involved, uh, reporters for example, that are supposed to be getting the story out? We have a couple of uh, rogue newspapers, so to speak, like New Times, Calcoast News. Karen Bealey reports for Calcoast News. She might be our most over the top reporter in the county as far as letting any of this information out. But I've been following the news in this county enough over the last five years to know that they're not telling us anything. They won't let anybody report what they what, what we should be saying. And those of us that are going through this process, we don't have an ear and, and you can't reach out to another person because they're afraid they're gonna jeopardize their place in line. Well, sure, and while this might not be national news, it's certainly local news and it has to be exposed. Do you believe that sometimes these reporters are a little too close to the other side and sometimes it's their career they're more concerned with Absolutely. when the reality of what you're dealing with. This has been the same group of people operating within this county for the last 25 or 30 years. They all know each other. They all know each other. They're all connected. You can't get anything through this county without it going through all the channels. But isn't it odd that the county's not realizing the revenues that would be associated with offering and giving and providing these permits, approving them so that you could provide those revenues? That's not happening. No. So what is it about? Is it about a power play, monopolization? What would you assess this as? <clears throat> I'm not sure. I mean, I see that Slow County approved cannabis and thought they were going to make money off of it, but since it started, it's like basically like they've just been trying to shut it down as far as facilitated along. There's other things going on in this county. It's been poorly mismanaged. If you look at this county as a whole, our water's been mismanaged. Um, our district supervisor just headed them signing over the groundwater for the Paso Rebels groundwater. Say what? Water banking. Oh my goodness. She is, she, and she's forcing the other supervisors. And who is that supervisor? Lynn Compton. Lynn Compton. I've in heard fact, that name before. So It's the first time I've seen De Debbie Arnold speak openly against her in an article. They're talking about the fact that she wants to do water making in the, ground, the Paso Rebels groundwater basin. That is one of our last resources. If you look at every section of this county, we've been screwed on our water. Um, in searching for cannabis projects are eligible under the ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, I have come across the fact that almost all the developable property in this county has been sold off to six HOAs that haven't been built yet. So if you want to come buy a lot, fine, build it to the HOA standards and follow their rules. Now your areas that the cannabis licensing shows on your site plans is all through here. Yes. And uh, what's behind the mountains here? Um, on the other side of this back fence, we have a neighbor who does, uh, he farms mice. Okay. Um, and above beyond the uh, ridge line? That is all cattle pasture, and on the other side of that is Lake Lopez. Is that a man-made lake? It is an above ground man-made reservoir, yes. Uh, so is any of that water being used uh, in your operations? Or are you all groundwater? We're all groundwater. We've got a major aquifer that runs right underneath the center of this property. All right. So water rights uh, and your issues weren't really a concern? Not a concern. Okay, sounds good. And that's, that's here and there across this state, you'll see some cases where it's more pertinent than others. But uh, I believe this, the, the uh, planning commissioner that's now, now a board of supervisor, the Don Lay, she kind of saved this project because she pointed out, what are you going to tr traditionally farm on seven acres that's lucrative? And then the other thing that was pointed out is my three and a half acres of cannabis is less water intensive than any crop that could be grown here. Yes. So she pointed that out, thank God. All right, so we got to get the media more involved. We got to let them know they have a responsibility to this and the people in this county. We got to let everybody in the county know what's been going on because as we said earlier, it's undoubtedly not just uh, focused on cannabis licensing. Well, and I'm a little heart sick because as much as I want to own this property, I'm not sure if I want to look at an eight foot or a six foot slatted chain link fence with a barbed wire over it and security no. cameras all around it in this valley next to my horses. No. I mean, we're already blocked off from the road and I don't mind fencing it off. But I got to build a prison compound to grow ca cannabis. Yeah, no, that doesn't sound. Uh, it, it makes me like sad. a good trade-off at yeah, all. Yeah, no, it 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 actually upsets me. This is me God's a country, folks. We got to find a way to or incorporate what we have here by nature to what we need by man. Right. Well, I mean, who's gonna break into a a double barrier? Why wouldn't it even be deer fence on the inside? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because it's cannabis, people break into stuff all the time. So why I have to build a giant 
LA type industrial compound. It doesn't for warrant my it. outdoor to be in here it and doesn't ruin warrant the integrity it. of my property. These are questions that need to be asked by the media. So let's go back to that. Let's uh, keep them focused on trying to get right what needs to be made right. Really it's, important, uh, real quick, on Pan on the Hillside uh -huh. on this property because we, when we moved here, this property has not been maintained or taken care of in over 20 years. So you're talking the area between the poles? All the way from the, where the white vinyl fence starts. Uh -huh. So see all this natural hillside. Okay. Nobody's messed any of that up. You go all the way across this whole top up there. Uh huh. Um, they farmed fava beans up there for a minute at some point in the past. So this is all natural riparian. Okay. Okay, we want to keep it that way. Yes. I mean, if we wanted to come in here and do grapes, we could. What if they offered you all your licensing money back, everything that you've applied for in the permit process? Would you take that and walk away from cannabis right now? No. Because so, we have to, what? We bought the property so we could do cannabis okay. because the county made us buy the property. But you so. still don't know. It's like trying to fly a plane while you're building it, what the eventual project is going to look like. We've been very careful going through this process. So I would say we're probably a half a mil to, to date into this process. And then even our full build out, if we were to come out here and build everything tomorrow, it would still only be about two and a half, but we had to pay two for the property. Yep. So, was the price, the purchase price influenced by the fact that yes. you were going after cannabis oh, licensing? Yes. So the owner knew quarter. that. Yeah, yeah. Another 250? Yeah. Okay. Well, we weren't protected on that either. Land use goes with the property. So the landlord was gonna sell the property out from under us. Well, as I understand it, he signed a, a permission for us to apply for a five-year use permit. And when we were granted that, he denied us the five-year lease. Oh. So he should have given us the five-year lease. Instead, the county goes, oh, that's too bad. You hope you buy it and made us wait. Unbelievable. So they were gonna give the land use to whoever purchased the property, but they haven't even addressed the fact that I'm the one that has the approved project here. And over my dead body, is anybody else going to build it? How I'm many, taking it with me. How many feet uh, do you expect that fence to be? Uh, he wants the outer perimeter fence to be eight foot uh, deer fence or suspension wire. And he wants the interior fence to be six foot slatted chain link with two strand barbed wire on the top. Unbelievable. Of it's going to be gross. Yeah. I've almost cried a few times sitting on the horses looking over here thinking about it. No, that just, it's just going to be ugly. Folks, picture that. I mean, this is a complexion that completely changes everything should that go through. I mean, all we want to do is like clean up the oak trees a little bit and sulfur spray them twice a year to keep our bugs out. Well, of them. you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to stand up to the, the plate mm -hmm. and uh, enforce your constitutional rights on this type of thing. And uh, I hope you find that court and that venue where you can do so. Well, you know, the worst part about it is if it is federally legalized in 2023, I spent all this money to build this fence. That this is all a moot point. Yeah. So the minute this becomes federally legal, I don't need to have a six foot chain link fence with uh, barbed wire. So a larger tent. I don't have to be, I'm not in three acres. No. So My whole 300 foot, set, 300 foot setback becomes a moot point. A, large, so, a larger tent brings more people to it and yeah. relaxes the enforcement activities that we're currently undertaking. Well, and if I'm already eight months into the approval pro, or into the uh, land use process, uh -huh. I'm eight months into trying, past being approved, trying to figure out where to put my fence. It's 2021, we're almost halfway through 2021. Do the math really quickly. In a year and a half, the ordinance will have changed, but my fences will already be up. And the minute they federally legalize it, this is all a moot point. I can grow it right up to Wozner Road as long as it's fenced. I, I just don't know what to say at this point. Uh, this is not a project that they've identified for the actual conditions the and tried to- The sheriff says this is the best project he has seen to date in the entire county. And what sheriff was that? Sheriff Hernandez. He said, this is the most appropriate place. I don't have any residential neighbors. Uh, we used to joke because they used to grow um, white button mushrooms, so they would do nitrates in the soil. Uh -huh. And then the mouse farm has its own special smell when they do their their uh, rice hulls out to dry them out before they incinerate them. Uh -huh. So I would laughingly say we're the three ends of Waza. You've got mice, marijuana, and mushrooms. <laughs> okay. And they all three smell. Uh -huh. And actually, both of them say we smell better than they do. Yeah, you're the only one that I'm doesn't get to one. operate. Yeah. And during our youth permit hearing, we had some a couple up the road that think they live in residential rural who were saying that it would ruin the smell and they have asthma it's like well then you shouldn't live in the middle of an ag field yeah it doesn't matter what we grow you and were here first growing up the street when they do the alyssum and they spray it mm -hmm. is way worse than anything we're doing over here with cannabis so we haven't really looked uh at this part of the project going uh where is your property line over here please can you point it um basically right on the other side of the hill where okay you see that, that uh power line uh -huh. shoot straight down to Wasner Road. Do you have any plans for that side? Um, is it not enough room? Move the horses up over there. Okay. So we want to keep the barn 
stalls here and we want to keep access to the arena, but we'd really like to make them like proper turnouts okay. and depopulate the stalls. Yep. So when I have events, people can come and rent stalls from the nonprofit for the night. So we have the facility to use. Fantastic idea. I mean, Just... we've been stuck here doing this for all the time being. I mean, uh, we have to refence the perimeter of the fence line to safely put horses out there. We can put 10 horses out back all summer. They can eat grass. So that's about how many of those useless mares we have up top. So that's sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So they got the 40 acres of back pasture. We have another corral. We can lock them in. Uh, we can utilize that for trail riding because you can't ride off the property. But cannabis plays a instrumental element into your future plans and uh, they've just been slow to respond. So I'm so sorry for you, but I'm so thankful for you. What you're doing here is God's work. Krista, again, thanks for having us out. We look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you. Hanging in there.